Welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira, and today I'm continuing to work on the abandoned coffee shop project. If you've missed any of my previous tutorials on how I worked on this project, you can look in the iCard section that I will link above and check out the abandoned coffee shop playlist. A lot of these things that you are looking at now, you can find out how I made them. Today I'm going to be working on an appliance to go into the coffee shop. This is the first time I have actually made an appliance besides the phone that you see on the wall. I am going to be using polymer clay and oh my goodness, this project drove me crazy. I think I bit off a little bit more than I could chew. I feel like I'm still just beginning in polymer clay, but in the end I think it turned out all right, um, I'm going to have you guys vote at the end if you think it should be part of my project. But either way, I'm going to show you how I made it. So let's get started. At first I didn't know if I was going to make it metal or plastic, so I mixed up this color, um, like kind of a 1970s plasticky color, but in the end I end up painting it so that part doesn't really matter. Um, I decided to use this photo reference and I'm making a toaster oven slash coffee pot type thing. I've never actually seen one of these in person, but when I was researching coffee pots this came up and I really liked it. So now I'm trying to make, to the best of my ability, a flat sided rectangular shape. <laughs> and um, it. The, for some reason, my um, blade kept squishing down the sides, so it didn't turn out really flat. I did not have smooth cuts. Like I said, this is still a learning process for me. I think maybe if I had put the clay in the freezer for a few minutes, it would have helped. I don't know. But um, I'm using this extra sheet of clay to make sure at least the front of my project is going to be very flat and smooth. So I just added that onto the front. Also in the photo, you can see that the edges are curved. So along the sides, I just went ahead and rolled it on the table to make those curved edges. Now I'm cutting out the space for the toaster oven part. And I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife, and at first I'm just going to lightly trace it onto the face of the clay. And then I'm going to make deeper cuts so that I can cut the pieces out a bit <laughs> or kind of dig them out and for some reason I did not smooth that front piece that I put on to make the front flat I did not smooth it into the rest of the body um, if you decide to try and make this I definitely would do that before you put too much effort into the front part just I mean basically make the rectangle prism part better than I did <laughs> um, but anyway so I used several different tools to try and pull the clay out, and uh, it worked okay. I just kept going back and forth, pulling more and more clay out. So after that was done, I decided to go ahead and cut out the space for the coffee pot. Now this is going to wrap around the corner because the coffee pot is a large circular piece, and um, you can see it from both the front and the side of the toaster oven coffee pot Frankenstein machine <laughs> and so I made sure and cut it from the front to the side and did the same thing this was actually easier to pull the clay out but it still left me with kind of an uneven area but since I'm making it old like I, I've said many times aging things covers so many mistakes which is what is going to basically save this project for me Wow, and my bake that clay sign is upside down. <laughs> We're doing great on this tutorial. So after I baked the clay, um, I went ahead and sanded the edges because it, like I said at the beginning, it just really wasn't flat. But I figured if I sanded it a little bit, I could help that. And as I sanded, I kept this baby wipe underneath my sandpaper that helped kind of keep the clay sanding dust to a minimum, and it was easy cleanup. So what I decided to do was to take the already baked piece and wrap it in a new thin layer of clay. Uh, the reason for this you will see later. Basically I want to make it look like the rust I'm going to be putting onto the 
uh, appliance. I'm just gonna call it the appliance because I don't know the official name of it. I want to make it look like the rust has eaten away at the metal, so I need to have another um, piece that I can cut some holes into. Now I'm taking a miniature plate and I'm just pressing a small round indention in the top. A few of the appliances that I looked at looked like they had kind of a coffee pot warmer on top and so I just wanted to give a hint of that on the top of the clay and that is above the toaster oven side. Now I'm using my X-Acto knife to cut a few lines uh, onto the top to make it look like where someone would lift the lid and uh, yeah so the words with me are not great this week. <laughs> uh, on the other side I decided to go ahead and cover it again uh, again for the purposes of making it look like rust has eaten through the outer shell and also it's kind of covering some uneven mistakes that I made um, and I don't know if you think this, but it looks like Kraft American cheese singles to me. That's all I can think when I look at this video. It looks like I'm covering this with cheese. <laughs> so another piece that I added on was along the front between where the coffee pot would go and where the toaster oven is. I just wanted to elevate that a little bit and I'm just smoothing it into the existing clay. This is also going to be where I put the buttons, so I wanted to make sure that that was a part that looked nice as well, was nice and smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some of the, the layer that I just put on off, and this is where it's going to look like rust has eaten through. And at this point, I think I was still thinking I was going to give this a plastic look, so I kind of made it look more like plastic shards had come off but in the end I decided to make it look more of a metal look <laughs> it's been a long week I'm tired and I don't think I was clearly thinking and my sign is upside down again so <laughs> I baked it and um, this is where I fully decided that I was going to make this look like a metal um, appliance and I also what I'm showing you there are some shards I used. I just kind of um, cut down the sides after it was baked to make it a little bit more straight. So now I took some dark brown clay and it doesn't really matter because later I paint over it but um, this is going to be the feet for the appliance and I'm just going to take some I think it's Sculpey or I don't know. I don't know what brand it is, but it's the liquid clay glue stuff. And I'm just going to use that because it's going to be very hard for me to smooth it onto the clay to get a very good hold once I bake it. So that's why I'm using the liquid clay. I'm also going to um, make the dials. And I want one big one, one smaller one. And I used my X-Acto knife to make like little slits in it so it looks like it's got some kind of texture. And um, you can see here me struggling with the little bitty pieces. They did not want to play nice this week. But um, in the end, I got it to function, I think. I also added a little handle at the top of the coffee pot side because there should be something you can lift up to put the coffee in. Um, I'm, what am I doing now? Oh, I'm making the cover for the toaster oven side, and I was, I don't know, not very exact, <laughs> but I kind of measured it and got the size that I wanted. I knew that I was going to have the door kind of falling off, and so I wasn't too concerned about it. I knew that, the, like I said, this would be aged, and so if it was kind of dented and dinged, it would be okay. Um, so I cut the center out and I went back and forth on whether I was going to have glass in it or make it look like the glass had popped out, broke, uh, but in the end you'll see I put some plexiglass in there. And I also put a handle and I also couldn't decide whether I wanted it to be open or closed and my baked clay signs are just going to be upside down the whole time. 
I can't, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, after I baked that, I decided to go ahead and do the coat of the final color. And it's this teal color. It's probably a little bit too modern. I should have added just like a hint of green to make it a little bit more vintage. But um, once I age it, it definitely adds more of a vintage color look to it. And then I also painted those colors uh, where the clay was dark brown. I painted those black um, just to make those details stand out. And I also put black in the parts where I cut away for the rust. And now I'm just using some watered down black paint. And you guys, if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen me do this a lot. I'm just going to put it all over where it looks like dirt and water and mud has accumulated. And then you can definitely see where that little place is where I put the circle for the coffee warmer because the, um, the liquid paint will kind of settle in there. And I'm also going to use a little bit of liquid brown. This helps give your aging a little bit more realism when there's some different colors. So now I'm going to make the coffee pot. I actually make this twice, once on camera, and then I mess it up and smash it accidentally, and then I make it again. Uh, so yeah, this project went well. <laughs> So I mixed some gray, some shiny silver, and then a little bit of shiny gold to get this kind of aged, silvery, oxidized look. And I just made it into a sphere that I knew fit into the appliance. And then I made a thin piece that wrapped all the way around. Well, not quite all the way. I had to remake that part. <laughs> and. Um, then I kind of pushed it down onto the mat so that it would flatten on one side. And then uh, for the top, I tried several different ways, but what seemed to work the best was to just lay a flat disc and then push down with a rounded piece. And then uh, somehow I skipped the handle part when I remade it and the thing around it's not straight, but we're good. We're gonna bake the clay and keep on going. So thankfully it fits in the slot, which I measured before so I knew that would happen. And, um, but before I put it in there, I'm going to go ahead and age it because it's easier to do while it's outside. I'm gonna add a little bit of gray paint to dull down some of the shininess and you won't be able to see all the way into the coffee pot so I'm not too worried about it, but I put some dark brown paint so that it looked like it was there was like a hole in the top or some gunk had like been in there. And then I went ahead and glued it into the appliance. And here I'm showing you I added plexiglass to the door. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that on. I decided I didn't want to mess with trying to make it look like it was open. I didn't want to have to put anything in it. So I decided to glue that on just kind of crooked like it had started to fall off. Now I'm gonna make my rust stuff, and I'm using dark brown paint, some tacky glue, and then some artist sand. This is very fine sand. If you go out to the beach, you're gonna get all different size pieces of sand, and it may be too large to give the correct effect. So I definitely suggest getting some actual sand from a craft store. And for this, I'm just mixing it all together and I'm going to use kind of a needle tool to put it all over the toaster oven coffee thing. And it wasn't until this point that I actually started liking this miniature. I feel like it looks a little bit more like something you'd see in Coraline or some kind of um, claymation type thing but I feel like aging it made it look a little bit more realistic and of course everything in my abandoned coffee shop I'm trying to keep looking very realistic so I struggled with this project um, it's been <laughs> one of those crazy weeks where just everything fell on this week but I still wanted to make something I still wanted to get a tutorial out and I think it's okay to um, admit to people when things don't go exactly as you thought they would go because that happens to everybody. 
Um, for the rust spots, what I did is I ended up filling in those um, spots so that it didn't look like such a, I'm going to call it an eyeball shape, but it looked more like a hole. And then I also add a little bit of rust to the teapot or the coffee pot and that helped with that looking a little bit more realistic too. And then of course added some rust around the very top where the coffee warmer is. And then lastly I added just a little bit of red to make that bump that I put at the bottom look like an indicator light. So now you need to vote. Where should this guy sit? To the right of the sink, to the left of the sink, or a little further down from the left of the sink? Or is he too big? Does he need to go on the floor? Or does he need to leave my project altogether and be saved for something else? I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I struggled with it a lot, but I ended up liking it in the end. Um, sometimes that happens and it's okay. I hope you guys have an amazing week and I will see you in the next video. Bye.